So yeah, so those are bins. We've got our footage. We've got our uh, we've got our media. We've got audio. We've got everything that's in here. And also, let, let's quickly go through some of these items here and show you what what these are. And by the way, right now I am down in list view. You have two different view. You actually have three different views in here. You have list view, icon view, and freeform view. Let's show what each one of these are. Uh, icon view. You click on that. Uh, what it does is it shows right now I'm still in my project heading here. I haven't gone into a folder or anything. This is just my project, so it's got all these folders organized into it here. But now I've got these uh, folders as icons. You got this footage as icons. Like there's a folder. Let's go to a folder, this folder right here. I'm going to select this one. I'm going to double click on it and it opens it up in a separate tab. So I've got my main project tab right there and it says project right in front of it. It explains what type of tab it is. And then I've got bin, so that's one of my folders and scene one merges the name of that. And then I've got all my media within that folder that belongs to that folder there. Uh, if you want to close these, you can hit Command W uh, for, to close a window or uh, Control W on a PC. Then if you hold down Alt or Option, or it would be Alt on a PC, you double click on this folder and if you double click on the folder, what it does is it opens up this free floating window of the media inside of that folder. So that's that folder folder window right there. Uh, but now let's close this. So we showed you the list view here. We've got the icon view. And within the icon view, one thing you're going to notice here, I'm going to option double click on this folder. It will open up the, uh, the, these thumbnails here. So your icon view is essentially a thumbnail viewer. I could put this back to list and it will show a list of these items with and what we have here on the side is our metadata this the list view will show your metadata it will show you things like resolution it will show you things like frame rate your media start your endpoints your out points and a whole bunch of different other uh, information uh, that's pertinent to the the clips that you have you can have a whole lot of different metadata if you right click on this bar up here you can go to the metadata display and you can tell what sort of metadata you want it to show and there's just a tons of different things with especially with larger projects some of this stuff is going to be incredibly important for larger projects to keep things organized things like camera roll daily roll, roll a whole bunch of different types of things in here that can be check marked and added to your metadata bar one thing like right here i can click on proxy first of all let's show you this does not go uh, as we go all the way to the end, you, this does not have a proxy tab up here. If you right click in here, you can go to metadata and you can just, you can even type in the search, say proxy, it'll bring that open and I can just say uh, add, add a proxy metadata tab here and hit OK. If I scroll a little bit over, there it is, it's been added. I haven't done any proxies for this so it doesn't have any information there, but, but you can add more metadata information under the list view. And you can actually organize your footage by things like time code. If you have a running time code, you can select that and it will organize your media by time code or by name. And you can reverse the order of the name as well just by clicking the arrow up or the arrow down there. So we showed you icon view, but let's move over the icon view and show you what happens as we move our mouse over this. Right now, I am not clicking on any of these. I'm just hovering my mouse over. And as I move my mouse from left to right, it plays the clip from left to right from beginning to the end. And you see that little teeny playhead moving across the clip there for the duration of the entire clip. Now, let's say that with these thumbnails up here, let's say you have uh, maybe a thumbnail that you don't think is representative of the clip that you're going to be editing. And let's say you want to change that frame. Uh, that thumbnail, they actually call poster frames inside of Premiere Pro. So if I want to change that thumbnail, all I have to do is I, I move my mouse over and I hover back and forth uh, until I get it to where I want. So I'm going to move this through and find the exact frame. Let's say right there is the frame that I like to, this, this clip to represent. Uh, this is the image I like this to represent here. This frame, I want this to represent that clip there. So with the mouse hovering over, let's get it right there is right there is where I like it. I'm going to hit Command P. This is on a Mac. Command P, and I'm going to move my mouse away. And look what it's done. This will still hover. As it'll still scrub through this clip as I move my mouse through it. But if I take it away, that still it still retains that image as the poster frame or the thumbnail for that image there. Now important on a PC, it is Shift P. So Shift P on a PC and Command P on a Mac. So if I once again, if I move through, let's go down to a different clip and let's say I like that right there as my poster frame. Command P or Shift P on a Mac. I move my mouse away and it freezes that as the thumbnail for that clip now. Right now, one thing to know is that this is organizing this footage uh, basically from left to right and then it goes down to the next column and it goes from left to right in order then down to the next one left to right. Now to make sure that this is showing in the right order here uh, what I want to do is I want to go down to this little sort icons and you have some ways to sort these me the media from left to right from top to bottom uh, based on certain metadata or by name or by what they call list view sort. This is the this is the standard right here. I usually do it by list view sort. However, you have organized this uh, this media in your list in your list sort. 
meaning this view right here. Whatever is selected in here as your list sort, uh, right now it's by name. If I move over to the thumbnail, and this is not doing it by alphabetical order, it's because my list has a different order. I might have like frame rate selected or uh, media end or something like that might be. And then if you go back to your thumbnail, now it's organized by the way that that um, that option is selected in your list view sort. So if I go back and I just say select it by name, and now when I go under my thumbnail, and I go down to this little tab right here, pull this down and say list view sort. Usually this is by default by user order, uh, the order that you've been using the items. And I'll put the, the most recently used one up here. But I like it on list view sort. That way if you have it under alphabetical order, it's going to list it under alphabetical order. Very important. Uh, you do have a thumbnail viewer down here or a thumbnail size changer. You can change the size of your thumbnails. So you can really look at your thumbnails and things that you're working with here. Moving along here, you've got uh, this item, the freeform view. What that's going to do, especially if we change the size of these files right here. Uh, notice it's not doing things from left to right all the way to the end here. This is leaving you some room. You can grab these things and move them around wherever you want and organize them however you want, which is kind of nice. Now if, if, uh, in some instances, if you're trying to put the crappy footage over here and just leave the ones that you're working with right now over here, you can kind of move the ones that you're not working with right over here and then you can access them. Whatever reason you might have for organizing the, these clips here. Down here, one thing I've got that we've got right here is this the pro this little lock. So the lock basically means the project is writable. What that means is you can do changes to the project. If you have someone like a director come in or producer that's going to be looking at your edit, just to make sure that they don't do any changes uh, to your project at all. They're just going to watch it and play through it and that's it. Uh, you're going to click this right here and say, uh, it'll save the changes before it makes it read-only mode. And you're going to say, yes, you want to save the changes. And now whoever's coming over here and viewing this, they come through and start looking at your clip here and looking at looking at your movie here. They're not going to be able to grab anything and change it. Say they gr grab their mouse like, oh, what's this clip? And I'm going to try and move it over here. And they try to destroy your edit. Watch what happens when I let go. It just says, nope, not being done. I select this clip and say, oh, I want to delete that. I'm hitting delete. Delete, 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 delete. It won't delete because right now my project is locked. This is making sure that that uh, that your project that you won't unintentionally do any changes, or somebody watching your project is not going to do un unintentionally do any changes there. So I'm going to turn that back on to writable. I'm going to move my mouse over and hit tilde, and I'm going to go back to my list view. So that's all these items down here at the bottom. And let's actually go back to the project window here. I can either close this window by doing Command W and then go back to my project window. Let's go back to list view. Close that right there. Close that. Okay, a couple of little shortcuts for selecting files here. First of all, if you're in your project window and you want to start selecting things through shortcuts rather than your mouse, you can first of all hit arrow down or arrow up. We'll select the first file inside of your project window. Then after that, if you want to move up and down these files here to select something, you hit arrow down to go down, arrow up to go up, and you hit arrow right to open up a folder and arrow down to select a file. And I'll select a file and if you want to load something into your source monitor you can simply double click on a file and it will load it into your source viewer up here. Otherwise if you're just going to stick to shortcuts you can hit arrow down find a file that you want to open up and you hit shift O and it will open that clip up in your source monitor. So the shortcut there is shift O. So if we want to find a clip I can hit shift 1 to jump to my project window. I'm going to tilde over this just so I can, we can see it a little better. Now I'm going to hit arrow down. Let's, let's say I'm up here at the top. I'm going to arrow left. We'll close my folder. Say so I'm here at the top and I want to go down and find a clip. I'm going to arrow, arrow, arrow down, arrow right, arrow down, find the file. Let's say I go to uh, 1E take 2 and I do hit shift O and it opens it up. There we go.